Hi, Graham Barnett. Welcome to 69 Faces of Rock. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I've been uh, traveling and uh, had a long drive today, but uh, apart from that, everything's good. So what's new with Graham Barnett Band? What's new? Oh, well, we are touring, let's see, we're doing this tour here in America. We've got two, two gigs, Chicago, we've done Chicago and now where are we now? Uh, St. Charles, <laughs> Illinois. Over, over there, yes. So we've done a couple of gigs here, then we're going back home, and uh, when we go back home, we go out again and we're going to Japan, which will be a, a longer tour. And also there are some other uh, gigs being added, but I'm not quite sure of the, you know, the number of gigs that are being added or what they are yet. You know, they're coming in all the time, which is good, because we haven't played for so long. Uh, yeah, well, tell me about how you resume Grand Bonnet Band with Coronado, Presonado, and Known Guitar once again, and uh, Beth, Amy Havenson. How did that come up, come come back? Come around. Oh, yeah. well, it was uh, something that um, Beth and me suggested, uh, because um, I left my so-called band Alcatraz, and I, di I didn't know what to do. And um, uh, Beth and me said, well, why don't you get, um, get Coronado back again, and we, we'll make a, the band again, another band. And I said, well, okay. So we started recording and um, decided that probably the band was going to be called the Graham Bonnet Band or something like that. Um, because it wasn't going to be Alcatraz, because I left them and uh, under not very happy circumstances. But uh, anyway, that's uh, another thing. Um, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it, but uh, that's what we're doing now. And so I'll start uh, writing again songs with Conrado and uh, with Bethany and start something new. The, uh, I'm very pleased with the new album, by the way, the last one we just put out. Yes. Uh, Day Out of Nowhere is... Uh, and that's the album, you want to show it? Yeah, hello. Okay, there it is. There, there, yeah, I think this is really good. Conrad's done a really great job producing in Bethany too, you know. So, um, it's been... Uh, I, I, I can listen to this and not go, ooh, you know, because sometimes you make uh, recordings and you go, oh, I wish I'd done that again, or whatever, you know. But, but this, I, I can listen to it and go, that's pretty good. So tell me about the uh, writing and recording of this record. Well, it's, uh, I basically do the lyrics and the melody, I think, obviously. Um, but uh, I try to find subjects that are a little bit different. Um, it's sometimes hard because I've made up songs about just about everything. But I don't like to take um, fantasy, you know, like uh, devils and all that kind of thing. And, you know, that, that is not my thing. I like to kind of... What did I do on here? Think. Well, Day Out in Nowhere, for instance, that's a real story. That's about um, when we were traveling in Russia. Uh, I was traveling with another bunch of guys uh, playing. And uh, we went through a certain area where there was like nothing. It, the, the, everything was dead. I, and I looked, looked out the, the window I said, well, where's the, there are no birds in the sky, you know? And I can't see any horses in the fields. What's happened? You know, and it was, all very silent outside and nothing was moving. No birds, no roadkill, nothing. It was like it had been cleaned up with a vacuum cleaner. And um, I just wonder why it was like that. And I thought, well, I wonder if that's something to do with the farmland. They sometimes put stuff down or have ele electric stuff going or gas or something to uh, kill off the, you know, the vermin or whatever it may be. And um, I said to the guy, you see, when we start getting nearer to the uh, city, we're playing it, all this life will come back. They didn't notice it. Well, I wouldn't notice anything. There was no, no birds. It was so, so weird. And I said, you watch. And as soon as you got clear, you know, into the uh, city area, there were the birds. And there were the horses in the fields. All the, you know, the sort of dogs barking and all that kind of stuff. So that's what said it, that's about. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of your other favorites from the record? Sorry? What are some of your other favorite songs but, from uh, the record? I like um, uh, Imposter and uh, David's Mom. <laughs> is what I like uh, because it, it's uh, it's kind of funny. Tony and she can bring back many memories, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's hard to really think. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uncle John, I think, is another one that's uh, close to my heart in a way. Um, I really love the orchestration on song Susie. Whose um, idea was it to arrange it that way? Song, which one? Susie, the last Susie. song. Oh, that was a uh, comrade's idea. Mm -hmm. I, um, I had the song and I was going to do it like acoustically or something like that and, and then I said well why don't I do it with a, like a brass band or something and uh, he said what, what about orchestra and I said well, that's a good idea mm -hmm. and he had a friend who put this orchestral piece together and it's fantastic and it made that song very dynamic I think mm -hmm. it's incredible 
Yeah. It's about a, a friend of ours who died, and this is a, tri a tribute to her, you know. Um, now, it's just a freaking song, uh, has done every guessing on it. Uh, what was it like to uh, reconnect with you, Rainbow Bandmate? Oh, <laughs> well, I see him quite a lot when I do go to England. Uh, but it, we keep in touch, and uh, he, you know, he sent me a track. I said, Do you have something for my, my band's album? And he said, Yeah, I've got something. He sent me this thing that was very kind of deep, purpley sounding, and we added to it. And uh, I sat down, I, I, the paper was in front of me, I'm going, uh, what can I make this up with? How, how should the melody go? I'm going, it's just a freaking song. <laughs> I didn't say freaking, I said the other one. And uh, that was it. Bing! <laughs> so that was uh, about, uh, you know, um, writer's block, you know, that kind of thing. And that's what it's about, basically. And uh, it, was, it was good to do uh, a, a song with Don. I've never recorded one of his songs ever. Mm. Never. So this is uh, a first. Uh, and, and staying on the subject of Rainbow, it seems like lately you've been explaining the haircut situation more often than anything else. Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that, the haircut keeps coming back every... I see it all the time. Rich is, uh, I guess, really into it. Yeah. And it. It's a story that's carried on forever, and I, I can't believe has it. has a life of its own now. I know. <laughs> it does. It does it, it, there might be a song in that, you know. So it's just carried on for all these years, and I don't know why he keeps bringing so it up. So what, what really happened then? I, I, it didn't happen like that. <laughs> I just had my hair cut, period. That was it. I went out into the city, wherever we were at that time, uh, when my, I got my hair cut. It was into the city, I think it was in Scotland, I, I'm not sure. But um, I remember uh, going out and saying to my ex-wife, said, oh, I can't get my hair cut, you know, it's a little long at the back. And so I went and got my hair cut, that, that's it. But then this story came out of somebody was on guard outside my uh, hotel room, so I didn't escape. And, and Richard said to them, make sure he doesn't go out and get his hair cut. Like, he knew that I'd go and get my hair cut. Like, it, was, it was all, all I'd live anyway. I just thought, oh, I'll go and get my hair cut. I didn't plan anything. And um, so that's kind of it. He's kind of added on to it. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's silly, you know. Or oh, he escaped through the window. You know, we were like 12 floors up. Yeah, oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> or whatever it was. But uh, it, it's untrue to the max. But he's adding to it. And thank you, Richie, it's a good story. I, I think you'll be explaining that one on your deathbed. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I know, I know. It's, uh, it, it is, it's just complete fabrication. Yeah, I mean, Richie's the ultimate joker, you got to give him that. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, it says, I think he tells that story with tongue in cheek anyway. Yeah. Uh, now, it seems like at one point Graham Bonner then morphed into Alcatraz. How do you view that entire situation? Uh, well, when was this? Well, it's sort of, what, now or late or before? Yeah, before. <laughs> oh, uh, it, well, use the name Alcatraz because um, that's uh, what I was, was my band years ago, you know. And so uh, a couple of guys uh, were in the band that were from Alcatraz, along with Bethany and uh, different guitar players, actually, wasn't it? We had a lot of different guitar players. We didn't have uh, Ingrid Melstein, unfortunately we didn't have Steve Vai, but we played Alcatraz music. It wasn't really Alcatraz, it was a bit, a bit of everything, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, what's going to happen now is uh, I'm working with Jeff Loomis, who is a great guitar player, and he's out working right now. Um, and it will be a new Alcatraz uh, album, Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz, mm -hmm. featuring Jeff Loomis, I guess, you know. So I've written six songs already. Uh, for that. And uh, the album you did with them, Born Innocent, uh, what's yeah. your take on this record? Yeah, uh, I mean, this isn't bad, mm -hmm. but it was my farewell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See you later, because uh, things weren't going too good. And um, uh, management, the way I was being treated, and everybody was being treated, you know. Uh, so this was one, one thing that I got out of, and uh, I'm glad I did. Because we're going through a bit of a court case thing now, and it's uh, annoying. Ooh. Because they want the name, and uh, it's, it's my freaking band. It's all about the brand. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the band will never sound like it. It does, did, without the songwriting and the singer. Hmm. You know, it's a completely different thing. They should call themselves something else, but they're using the band band name to get work. And people book the band and go, this is now, what? Where's Graham? You know. Great question. Because Graham, I mean, I'm not being egotistical either. Graham was the centerpiece. He was the songwriter and the singer. The guy up front, you know. And the, it doesn't work by putting somebody else in there. You know. um, last time I saw Graham Barnett 
band live, Joey Tafola played guitar and I felt he sounded really good with the band. Why didn't he last? Who? Joey Tafola. Oh, I, I think he had something else to do. He, he was a very unusual person. He's a, a very nice guy that likes working with other people all the time. Mm -hmm. And so he's one of those guys that gets a lot of sessions and gets to jam with other bands all the time. And I, I, I think we all knew that he, he probably wasn't going to stay. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the dynamic within the band now? In what way? You mean? How are you get along? Well, we all get along pretty good. Mm -hmm. in, fact, in fact, very good. With the new uh, members of the band we have right now, it's fantastic because they're all so young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm so old, uh, you know, I am so young and yeah, you're so... Paul Anker's on. Um, Miss Diana, I'm being told. Um, so it's really good and uh, it's not, there's no ego thing going on. Um, but it's like a little family. You know, Bethany's put this thing together. She suggested Conrado, as I said, mm -hmm. but she's brought the band together because She's the mummy of the band. She's mama. I just told her she brings the balance. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm granddad. I'm, I'm granddad. But it is, you know, that's how it feels. It's like a family thing, you know. Now, recently I came across a session you just did for a cover of Pink Floyd song, San yeah. Tropez. Uh, some unusual characters in, in, in that lineup. Tell me about it. Yeah, yes, it was a very unusual song to sing. Actually, I was like, oh, what's this? I, I didn't know what the hell it was. And uh, But the, the people that are doing like a Pink Floyd, uh, bunch of albums or cover version of Pink Floyd uh, stuff so we wanted to sing this one and I thought well, well really? this one never gets covered by the way yeah I see it's, uh, it's a lot yeah I did dogs sing for dogs. and um, the other one I, I could see me sing it but this one I didn't think it suited me at all but it came out okay but um, I like the other one the other track got it when you recorded that song did you guys see each other in the studio or was it done separately I did it at home okay recorded the vocals at home um, all right Tell me about the touring you did with Michael Schenker recently in the last few years uh, for the Michael Schenker Festival. What was that like for you? Oh, it was great. It was really great. It was great mm -hmm. to play with uh, Michael again. You know, after um, getting my hair cut. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it was it was um, it was a welcome home for me because I did screw up with the Michael Bank, uh, mm -hmm. Schenker band. I messed around a bit too much, oh, too drunk, and all that kind of shit that you shouldn't do. And uh, I eventually got fired from the band because of my drunkenness, and which I've tried to cure. It won't, I won't cure it ever, but I mean, I'm not boozing now, you know, that, so I can say that. Uh, but um, to play with him again, actually sing a whole song, instead of running off stage and saying, see you later, which I did on the last tour, on the third, first, first uh, gig I did with Michael, mm -hmm. I fucked up. And I just ran off stage, oh, because uh, I was out of it, I completely out of it. And they had to play instrumentally mm -hmm. all night. And uh, that's why I was fired, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's nice now to actually go on stage and sing the song with Michael smiling back at me, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. I, yeah. I, I did catch one of those shows. It was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, there, there was everybody on that, show, on that show was so good. Yeah, you, were, you guys were having a great time. Yeah, a lot of was, support. yeah everybody was so friendly. And, well, great singers, you know, and what, what can you say about that? Great songs. Um, any chance of more collaboration with Michael? I don't know. Uh, maybe. I think uh, coming up down the line, uh, Bethany, yeah? You two discussed that possibility. Yeah, what's that? You two did discuss that possibility. And it yes, there is. The works. So it could yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, no, I believe it will. Yeah, excellent. I mean, Bethany's kind of managing the band and me mm -hmm. at the moment, obviously. And uh, she takes all the business stuff. For, uh, you know, she gets all the phone calls, blah, 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 even though she didn't want to take them. Suddenly she's the manager, because we don't have a manager that uh, we can trust anymore. Right. You know. The records were great, the shows were great, why yeah. not give people more? Yep, Bethany and Conrad did a great job on this album. Everything was just, just right to make that a damn good album, the uh, Bonnet Band album. But uh, to do another thing with Michael would be, it'd be great, really great. Rainbow question, I want to confirm something. Deep Purple's Perfect Strangers is an old rainbow riff. Roger Glover confirmed that to me in person. Question to you is, when you were in a band, did you ever hear that song, that riff? Were you exposed to it? Which, or did, uh, which riff is it's, it? It's that... It's an old rainbow riff that Richie had probably around your time that was never used until they got together with uh, Deep Purple for Perfect Strangers and then Roger goes, how about that riff? And then yeah, I don't they, know. I'm no. not sure. 
Yeah. I'm not sure about that. So you, you never heard that riff before? Uh, oh, probably, yes. I mean, I remember... Uh, uh, Richard There's a cassette Blair, out there of it, which I heard. I, I, th I can't think of it, but I, it's... It's just that part. It sounds like something else that I've done. Anyway... Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Richie was like, how do you know about this? I'm like, I heard that tape. <laughs> no, I've heard that before, sorry. R Richie came up with this riff and um, he, said to, he played it to Don Airy and he said, uh, what do you think? He said, that's the Batman theme. <laughs> he was going, do, 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 do. He said, no, that's Batman. And he said, no, it's not. He said, yeah, it is. <laughs> so Richie has these riffs in his head that I think he can't get rid of, uh, especially like Smoke on the Water, uh -huh. re revamped upside down and sideways, mm -hmm. I've heard on just about all these songs, you know, mm -hmm. which is probably a natural thing. And while you were in the band, were you involved in creation of any of the Difficult to Cure material, which later on came out with Jolyn Turner singing? No. No? I, I, I had, uh, I did one vocal session on the, uh, is that the one that, uh, the Russ Ballard song is on. Oh, I Surrender. I Surrender. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I, I did some backing vocals to that, and mm -hmm. uh, that's the only song we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to come in and do the lead vocal, but we didn't. Then Joe came in and did the whole thing again, you know. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any songs, so that's, that's one reason why I left. Um, getting back to your band now, uh, is there any new music being written for the next release? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying now. That's mm -hmm. what is happening with, uh, with me right now. I'm, putting stuff to, together and uh, playing it to Conrad and whomever else and asking uh, my friends if they want to put, uh, contribute to the album. So there will be another album, Graham Bonnet Band, and it, I hope it sounds as good as this one. I really do. I'm so proud of it. Finally, yes. um, you're at a point where your, your musical legacy is very visible. How do you reflect on all of that? Um, I'm sort of, I wish it would come a bit sooner. <laughs> I was, some, I've been, you know, somebody, I said, Barry Gibb said to me, he said to me, Graham, he said, you should have been a fucking mega star by now. This, I was going to work with him a while back. I was living in Australia at the time and he, he called me. And uh, I said, he said, well, look, Michael Bolton was out at this time. He said, well, Michael Bolton, he says, come on. He said, you could be a bit more than that, you know. Well, he, that, what he says, I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that I would. But uh, he was huge at the time, Michael Bond. Michael Bond, Michael Bond. You know, he said, you're the kind of person that should be out there now singing the kind of singing you do, that R&B stuff you do, you know, and whatever. And um, that uh, didn't happen because the record company didn't want to know. It was Capitol Records. They said um, they were working with, um, oh, it was all that grungy stuff that was coming out. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit old hat, old bonnet, old hat. You know, eh. you know that, they didn't want to know that. They wanted to get this new young people's music out there, you know, so it kind of lost on that. Barry wrote, called, called me up and said, I'm sorry, Graham, they just don't want to do this. And Barry sent me some money as well. He sent me some money for the playing fair. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. But, um, and he was really upset because we were very close when uh, we worked together back in 1968, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, they, he wrote songs for me and my cousin, you know, we were called the Marbles. And uh, we, uh, we thank him for that, absolutely, you know. And I, Trevor, my cousin, was in the, in the Bee Gees when he lived in Australia. That's how I got in touch with the, with the whole family. So, it's a family thing. Thank you. Hey! And now for a song. Yeah. <laughs>